first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. I pray for understanding, and it was given to me. I ask God for wisdom, and it came to me. I valued wisdom more than power and kingdoms. Riches were nothing compared with wisdom. I considered her more valuable than priceless jewels. Gold was nothing but sand, and silver was merely mud when compared with wisdom. I loved her more than good health and beauty. I preferred wisdom to light because she's much brighter. Wisdom has countless treasures and everything good is mine because of her. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us the, to use wisely all the time we have. When morning comes, let your love satisfy all our needs. Then we can celebrate and be glad for what time we have left. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Do wonderful things for us, your servants and show your mighty power to our children. Our Lord and our God, treat us with kindness and let all go well for us. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, what God has said is not only alive and active, it is sharper than any double-edged sword. His word can cut through our spirits and souls and through our joints and marrow until it discovers the desires and thoughts of our hearts. Nothing is hidden from God. He sees through everything and we will have to tell him the truth. The word of the Lord. Than for a rich person to get into God's kingdom. 
Jesus' disciples were even more amazed. They asked each other, how can anyone ever be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, there are some things that people cannot do, but God can do anything. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings we are hearing this weekend in every Catholic church throughout the world carry on a theme that is very common throughout the entire Bible. In fact, it's one of its main themes, and that is that God, in His tremendous wisdom, created a wonderful world with so many wonderful things in it that He expects us to enjoy it. He made the beauty of nature. He made a world where there are so many things to eat and to enjoy. He made human beings the high point of His creation. And he gave them a whole bunch of abilities and talents, sports and academics, in all sorts of different ways where we excel, doing tremendous things. And they're all very, very good. But the problem that Jesus points out in today's gospel is that some people only live for these things, forgetting that all these wonderful things that we have will one day fade away. They will not last forever. And the only thing that lasts forever is our soul. And the record of what we did with all the things that God gave us to enjoy while we're here on earth, that's what lasts forever. And so when some people hear today's readings, they say, well, it's bad to own things, it's bad to have things, it's bad to enjoy things, and that's not true. We know even Jesus went to parties and celebrated and for the Last Supper chose a very special room, a second floor with furniture, which was unheard of in those days, except for the very wealthy. The problem Jesus had is when we're only living for the here and now, for this world, where we don't make room for God, where we don't make room for those who are in need, where all we ever think about is me, myself, and I. And so, as we continue to learn how to become better Christians by reflecting on the readings we hear week after week, today's reading is asked to consider what are we doing with the things that God has provided for us, our talents and our abilities, the food we eat. Are we only thinking of ourselves or are we thinking of others and how we can help them with what God has entrusted to us? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, God substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resur resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God will hear our prayers, let us pray in confidence for all that we need. When I say, we pray, you say, Lord, hear our prayer. May the day quickly come when all believers are united in praise of the one true God. May everyone seek to understand those who are different from themselves, we pray. 
May every person be treated with respect and dignity as a beloved child of God. May all in the military and the missions and their loved ones be safe and secure, we pray. May the faith and joy of believers attract unbelievers into God's loving arms and into his church. May our parish be blessed with an increase in priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters, we pray. May those on the verge of giving up find strength, and those filled with doubts be filled with faith, we pray. If you have people you'd like to pray for, please do that now. For these intentions and those listed in our parish prayer book, we pray. Loving God, we know you hear and answer us whenever we call upon you. With the help of your Holy Spirit, may we hear and answer you too whenever you call upon us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.